Now, to be honest, I told myself I would never make a video on this topic just because I know how much flack it brings and how many people get upset and start debating and dialoguing. I mean, for Pete's sake, all you have to do is read the YouTube comments in some of my videos. Um, but I, ha I have a feeling or I hope that people are gracious enough where we can dialogue about this, discuss this, and ultimately go to the scriptures and see what God says about this issue and just chat about it because I think it's one that's the most misunderstood in today's society and it's the issue of tattoos, okay? Now obviously, you know what team I'm on, you know, I got some ink, um, but I prayerfully studied and pursued truth in that matter before I got these. These weren't whimsical, these weren't just on a whim. I did them on purpose and with intentionality. Now, tattoos, where do I start? So, a lot of times people will message on my videos, the classic disagreement with tattoos is in Leviticus. Now, I'll just read that verse real quick and we'll chat about it. So this is the only verse that pretty much people can go to in the Old Testament that talks about tattoos. And it says this, it says, out of context, it says in verse, uh, Leviticus 19 verse 28 you shall not make any cuts on your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves for I am the Lord now you read that out of context you're like oh brutal missed it right missed it but in context which is so important when you're reading the scriptures it's a little different it's a little different because in the entire chapter God in this passage is giving a bunch of statutes and kind of ways and how he lined up the Israelites to live at that point in time and let's read some more because a lot of people will quote this verse to me and if the people quote this to me then I would hope they also live up to the rest because that if they're going to live up to that then why not the other ones in the passage as well right and so just a few verses above it it says you shall not eat any flesh with blood in it and when you come into the land and plant any kind of tree for food, then you shall regard its fruit as forbidden. Three years it shall be forbidden to you and it must not be eaten. And then in the fourth year, you can eat it. And so a few things there is, if you're the person quoting to me that I can't get tattoos, then you hopefully also are the person not eating any fruit or vegetable that has not been cultivated for at least three years. And on top of that, you don't eat any meat because all meat has some form of either dried blood or if it's medium rare, totally normal blood in the meat. And so just from a contextual standpoint, we have to say, okay, well, obviously we still do those things, but why? Because in this passage, when you push into the scriptures and you kind of just study the context of this history and this time, you see it was meant for a time and a place. I mean, think about those other passages. Obviously we do those things and we cultivate and we eat fruit earlier and we eat medium rare steak. But God gave that to the Israelites as a wisdom issue. They didn't have pesticides. They didn't have refrigerators. And so he's looking at them and he's saying, he's saying, I'm looking out for your joy and your vitality. And this is how I want things to operate just so that you live right. And historically, if you look at their track record, they weren't one of the healthiest nations around because of that, because God had given them a few wisdom nuggets per se of how he made the world to line up. And then again, when you take that in context, and look at the tattoo verse, you also realize you can't mark up your body. So anyone that has, has earrings, I always think that's funny when they're critiquing me about tattoos. Same thing, same verse. But on top of that, when you push a little deeper, the reason they say that is because it says you shall not make any cuts on your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves. Now the biggest thing there is when you study pagan worship from this time, pagan idolatry, and there was a, a source of pagan idolatry that said they would cut themselves and tattoo themselves literally as worship to dead people. They would honor and worship dead people as gods by cutting themselves and bleeding out and tattooing themselves. Now, God said that because he didn't want them to be aligned with that culture and he didn't want them to give off the wrong signal, right? Because if that was what tattoos were known as, then when they got one, people would think they were worshiping pagan gods. But in our culture, when you see someone with a tattoo, you don't instantly think they worship dead people, right? It's not like Sixth Sense and Bruce Willis. That'd be really awkward and weird. Some people might do it, but tattoos on a whole, you don't look at like that and say, that's why. And so... It's a wisdom issue. It's not a sin issue, it's a wisdom issue. And what I mean by that is, if I have you know, kids, hopefully Lord willing, way down the line, and if it's a daughter, no tattoos, just joking. But um, if the daughter or the son wanna get tattoos, I'm gonna ask them why, I'm gonna ask them what of, and if they just say because it looks cool, because I wanna be the next, you know, like young Jeezy, probably not, because that's when they're 60 years old, those tats aren't gonna be looking that good. But my tattoos, just for example, this one says forgiven, and this one says loved in the original Greek. And so when I'm 85 years old, I'm still gonna wanna know that I'm forgiven and still gonna wanna know that I'm loved. And so I just wanna say, man, if we're gonna really 
address this issue? Can we just address it with right hermeneutic, right contextualization, reading it correctly? And a lot of people say, well, yeah, that's not the only verse. You know, in 1 Corinthians, it says that, you know, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, we don't want to mark it up. Now, yes and amen, but that verse, when you look at it again in its context, is specifically talking about sexual immorality. God says when you join yourself to another person in sexual immorality, because we're temples internally of the Holy Spirit, you're defaming and kind of like putting graffiti all over that temple and not respecting, respecting it or honoring it. So it's not even talking about external, it's talking about how sexual sin is one of the most unique sins because it's internal and more spiritual. And then it's talking about how the issue is internal in general. And so lastly, I'll also just say, you know, we also can even have a little sense of humor when you look in Revelation 19. It says that Jesus will come back and on his thigh, word for word, it says on his thigh will say, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now there's no footnote that says dry erase marker or with pencil. So I mean, maybe Jesus even had a tattoo. I mean, how else is it, right? What else could it be if it's stamped on his thigh? Now some of you watching are probably saying, hey, that's a stretch. And I say yes and amen, that's a stretch, but it's just as much a stretch, if not even less so than the stretch you try to make in Leviticus and 1 Corinthians. So I just say, hey, can we just turn this issue to the heart? Can we understand in context what those verses mean? And can we say that it's all about giving glory to God, whether that's in art, whether that's in tattoos, whether that's in piano, music, politics. It's all about using whatever we have to point to him. And if that's happening, can we just live in community? Can we just have love and grace and forgiveness with one another and just represent him faithfully?